Uh, everyone, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, I am. Uh, my name is Kamishiro Taishi, a uh, translator VTuber, and uh, joining me today is uh, Eric, uh, someone who has been making a lot of contributions to the Steno uh, community. And uh, so I myself. Uh, well, okay, just uh, hi, uh, Eric. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I, I'm an open Sano content creator. I uh, sometimes create YouTube videos centered around Plover and stenography. And yeah, I just really want to be able to share this, uh, I don't know what to call it, technology, this technique of typing. And it's just really such an awesome thing. And yeah, so again, thanks for having me on the stream. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> like, uh, just say, like, your video was the first one that I've ever seen anyone do steno on. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a friend of mine uh, sent a yeah. video. They were like, ha, 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 what if you could learn this? <laughs> and <then laughs> I watched it and I immediately was very, very, very impressed. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And you made you make very good videos. Very, very Thanks. sort of a <laughs> lot of information yeah. out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay then, uh, so, uh, what is Steno? Should we start off with that question <laughs> for all the people oh. who are joining? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is Steno? That's that's a loaded question. <laughs> oh, what uh, is it? Well, I, I guess it's sort of like a, it, it's a method of sort of text input where instead of like typing individual letters, you're sort of pressing down multiple keys at once in order to make sort of phonetic outlines of what a word is. Mm -hmm. So for example, to press, uh, to, to write the word cat, you press down the keys that represent the K sound, the A sound, and the T sound to make cat. Mm -hmm. And that's just sort of a very basic, uh, a, a very basic introduction to what Seno is. There's a lot more rules than that. It's not just like pressing down the individual letters in a word. There's stuff like dropping unstressed vowels, there's stuff like, uh, actually knowing what chords are for each sound and whatnot. Mm. But in, in essence, it really is just corded text input. So you would have to memorize how to input everything, all the words. Not quite all the words. It's mainly the, where the sounds on the keyword are located and sort of putting them together to make a word. So mm. it, it's definitely not memorizing every single word. A lot of people tend to think it's that, but it mm. really isn't. It's just memorizing what the sounds are represented by and being able to internalize all of that, put them together and then write whole words. I see, I see. Ah, oh, wait, hold on. I pressed something wrong. Uh, so, but like, uh, so basically you memorize just the, the consonants, the vowels and the, yeah. and the consonants again and you just mm -hmm. kind of pick it up, right? Right, yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, uh, well, before we get any further, I want to uh, show a video of Steno actually in action, just to show how fast it can get, right? Uh, so this is uh, a video on Eric's own channel, and uh, this is the one where he types a passage. So I'm just going to play it, it's like 15 seconds. The cursor is not even keeping up with you. <laughs> So there you go. That was uh, 263 words per minute. Yeah. 100% accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of really easy briefs in there. Like, especially, I think uh, something is like just two keys for me. So it's easy to just press right away. And there's so much of something. Something is it's such a nice, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a brief is like a um, abbreviated entry. So while I said that you don't like memorize every single word, there are some words that you might want to abbreviate to really short uh, strokes, they're called. And mm -hmm. something is one of them. So that was really, uh, it's called brief heavy, brief heavy um, uh, quote, I guess. Ah, I see. So you can you can sort of make short, make your own shortcuts. Yeah. The whole thing about Seno is that you make your own shortcuts that make sense to you. So I couldn't, like if, if, if I uh, tried out someone else's dictionary of, uh, uh, outlines, it wouldn't work for me because I don't think like them, they don't think like me, so it'll be actually completely different. Ah, 
Uh, I see. So uh, if you're gonna use this somewhere else, say you go out yeah. and you mm-hmm. wanna do a transcript for like a like a speech or something, you're mm-hmm. going to have to bring your own computer. You have to bring. You do have to have your own dictionary and I guess your hardware. But mm-hmm. if you're gonna bring your own like uh, Xeno keyboard, at that point, you basically have the room to bring like a USB drive, and that's all you need. Just a small USB thumb stick. Uh, you can load your dictionaries there. Um, there are other solutions like a. Uh, I don't have a picture. I have a picture of it in my Seno. I uh, sorry, my Discord profile picture. Mm-hmm. It's called a Seno Gachi, and it connects to your Seno keyboard, and it sort of acts like a plover in the middle. So the pl- plover is the uh, Seno software, and all the translation happens on that little thing that's connected to your keyboard, and that little thing also connects to a host computer via Bluetooth. So you don't actually have to deal with installing plover on a new computer or whatnot. And it's it's really good on sort of like a school computers or work computers where you're not allowed to install stuff, ah, and that's one solution. Yeah, I see. I but see. for the most part, dictionaries they're really small. Like they're just they're basically just text files, mm-hmm. and that's how they're stored. So it's not uh, it's not a big problem just copying it around, keeping it on the cloud and whatnot. Oh, on the cloud too. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. What is what is the weirdest thing that you've heard Steno being used for? The weirdest thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, if you asked that to a professional stenographer, mm-hmm. they'd probably say using it as a computer keyboard because that's actually relatively new in terms of the entire um, sort of, I guess, history of Steno. Because Steno's actually been around. Machine Steno's been around for basically a century. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they didn't have computers back then, but it's sort of the same sort of thing. Right. Um, but for me, I don't know if there's something weird people use Steno <laughs> for. I see. So like, I, I, I guess it's kind of weird using Steno for typing tests because Steno is not typing. <laughs> so it's in some ways people say it's cheating, and well, they might have a point. Steno is not typing. It, it it's it really isn't. I see. It's this this is very interesting. How how how. Like where different people come to it in different ways because I'm coming into this mm-hmm. with the, with the full intention of using this as for typing. <laughs> it is usable for uh, you can replace a computer keyboard with it. I just mean it's not typing as in pressing individual letters because a lot of stenographers they don't like to say that they type on their steno keyboards. They say they like to write. It's sort of like a little um, pedantic thing almost. <laughs> it's not a big deal. You can call it typing if you want. It's just some people don't quite like that um, description. I see. But yeah, you can you can replace a computer keyboard with Steno. I will be careful not to make that mistake. Then. <laughs> okay. Um. How did how did you get into Steno? Uh, for me, I remember I was playing Type Racer with some friends, mm. and I was asking him about. How do people get these 200 words per minute records on the leaderboards and whatnot? And he mentioned mm-hmm. stenography to me. And actually, he's wrong about that. The people getting those 200 words per minute records are just really fast typists. <laughs> but uh, he did introduce me to stenography, and I realized I, I wanted to learn that because I had an experience of learning alternative keyboard layouts like Colmac and Dvorak.、Uh... And then I decided、mm, maybe I should try Seno. And yeah, I did that. Like. Back in oh gosh, February of 2020. So it's been two years. Wow,、so、quite a while. <laughs> two years for me, anyway. Nice. How long did it take you to learn it then? To to right. So that's a that's a pretty big question. It varies a lot from person to person, and from what I can gather, I think I picked it up quicker than most people.、Um, hmm. I got about comfortable in three months. That's、uh, three months of maybe one hour of practice every day.、Mm-hmm. And the speed was about maybe fifty to ninety words per minute, and then after three more months, I was basically up at one fifty words per minute. So, it was it, it takes a lot more time to learn Steno than say an alternative keyboard layout, but、mm. the ceiling so much higher. Hmm. Yeah. I, I I heard the thing about where you can't graduate from Steno school until you get two twenty five. Was it? Yeah. You, yeah. That's it's it's crazy. Two twenty five. That's graduation <laughs> speed. I I shudder to even imagine it.、Uh, like right now, I only have a hundred, and and that's not fast enough for my needs.、Yeah. <laughs> if you listen to some of the、um, 
dictations on YouTube, they have uh, they, they record like just speaking at certain speeds for these Steno students. Mm -hmm. If you listen to 225 words per minute dictation Q and A, it's incredibly fast. Like right now, I think I'm only speaking at about 150 to 180. Mm -hmm. So it's like it doesn't compare. God, it's, it's crazy fast. Cause like uh, so what I plan on using this for is uh, except yeah. uh, except for normal just typing because like uh, mm -hmm. my job is trans I'm a translator by job right so yeah. I just type like pages and pages of text so that's that's yeah. one thing but I also um, do live translation for like oh. other vtubers and stuff uh, Japanese to English and so one thing that I've been noticing is is um, I can't type fast enough right yeah to do the conversion in my head mm -hmm. So this is one thing that I've been trying, hoping to <laughs> to work yeah. on. Yeah, I've I've really wondered about how you is it possible to use Sano to translate like real time. I'm sure it is. I just don't. I haven't heard of anyone who has done that. Mm -hmm. I know people who can Sano in multiple languages, and I kind of do that. I I I created my own uh, Vietnamese Sano system, but then I'm not mm -hmm. really good at it. <laughs> so, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I really I'm really curious about that. I want to see if you can do live translation like that. It's really, really cool. Yeah, I'm very, look, very much looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so uh, all this time I've had a uh, sort of Plover um, on my computer, on my desktop. But uh, first, should we talk about where to get Plover? Or, or what sure. is Plover? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so Plover is the Steno software. It's the first free and open source Steno software. And the thing it pioneers, pioneered in is that it can actually take a regular keyboard's input as a Steno machine. So if mm. you connect a regular keyboard to your computer, you can start practicing Steno. Uh, the, but the one caveat is that uh, most computer keyboards can only detect up to, say, six key presses at once, which is not ideal for Steno. Mm -hmm. So you have to get these keyboards, mechanical keyboards called NQ rollover keyboards. They tend to be like gaming keyboards you can buy on Amazon for like $30. Uh, and those are actually a pretty good experience. My, uh, regrettably, my photography, um, the Sano keyboard, I'm sh uh, you show, I, sorry, the Sano keyboard I had in that video, mm -hmm. it broke earlier this week, so I'm oh, actually no. stuck on an N key rollover keyboard, oh, which no. makes, yeah, <laughs> I'm really sad about it. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's what Plover does. It translates all the uh, input into the words and types it out like as if it's been typed on a regular keyboard. Okay, so uh, the place to get it is this website, I believe, uh, GitHub, right? Yeah, GitHub. dot com slash open steno project slash plover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then over on the right side, there is the releases button. Releases. All yeah. right. And there's continuous build plover four point yeah. oh point oh dev ten. Mm -hmm. So I think right now I. I um, the continuous and the dev 10 are the recommended release to go for. Uh, it's There's not much difference between the two, it's just that in the past, it was basically, uh, there was an old release that's three years ago that kept being recommended, and we'd always tell people don't get that, but I think that's not a problem, problem anymore. Uh, yeah, just the dev 10 or continuous is good. And then if you scroll down a bit to assets, mm -hmm. you click that, and then that's where you are. Uh, uh, download the installer for your operating system. Right, right, right. So that is, there's one for Mac OS, there's one for yep. Windows, and the one for Linux. Okay. All right. So I downloaded that and I I installed it and then I got myself mm -hmm. this interface right here. Yeah. Okay. And I have my board, which is I'm mm -hmm. which is uh, showing on screen right now. It is all plugged in. So how what do I do next? Uh, so let me just say there's a bit of latency on my end, mm. and the stream is about like 15 seconds behind, so I can't quite see what's going on in real time. Fair enough. Uh, I'm so sorry, my internet's no like pretty bad here. No problem. But uh, yeah, so you go to, you, you connect your Georgie up, you go to configure. Mm, configure. And then when you're in configure, you go to the machines tab. Okay, machine. And in machine, you should uh, it's, it's um, select a Gemini PR, which is correct, and okay. then you press the scan button, 
in the connections uh, header. Scan. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then when you press the drop down, there should be a few ports. Yes. How COM many ports are there? And COM three. COM one and COM three. Yeah. So the thing is, the scan button is not. It's first of all, it's labeled badly. It shouldn't be called scan. It should be called something like refresh ports. And when you press it, it doesn't um, select the correct port automatically. So you'll have to try each port. So really just try COM, uh, sorry, what was it? COM 1 and 4? COM 1 and 3? So I'm going to try one COM three. 3 then, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's apply but, and OK, right? Yeah, apply, OK, and then press stuff on the drawer to see if stuff happens. <laughs> Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. You should open the uh, paper tape. Uh, the Plover paper tape, this is a tool in Plover that shows what keys Plover is receiving. And it's really helpful for troubleshooting like this. Okay. All right. I see stuff. Nice. Wait, then it stopped showing me stuff. Hmm? Did it? Uh, is it just not scrolling or? Well, it pressed, there was SSTK, and then now I'm pressing more stuff and it's not showing anymore. Okay, so I think you've probably switched the Georgie into QWERTY mode. So the Georgie has a Seno and a QWERTY mode. Uh, I can't remember how to get out of it. I think you just press... Uh, yeah, it's, it's the top left button. I think that one switches between QWERTY and Steno. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Is it working? Nice, yes, nice. it's okay. working now. All right, so... So this would theoretically be able to input things now, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you write into Google Docs or whatever, mm -hmm. um, if you spam the keys, <laughs> you're going to be met with some random briefs and whatnot, and it won't look like readable text at all. But you can try that out. So, uh, I need to enable the output, do I? Oh, right, yeah, I didn't see that, yeah. Uh, output is disabled right now, so yeah, you do have to enable that. Okay. I'm getting numbers. Numbers? <laughs> is this normal? <laughs> uh, so the, the, the thumb clusters on the Georgie, the outermost clusters, those are the number keys, and they basically act as a shift, and they turn the entire top row into numbers. So that, that might be what's happening. Okay, so, uh, hold on. Which one was it that was turning things into numbers? This one? It is the... Outermost. Yeah, the outermost thumb thumb keys. Thumb keys. Yeah. Are those... So those would be... The thumb keys are the ones that are angled. The three keys angled um, on the bottom. Are those, those not vowels? So the two inner ones are vowels, and then the ah. outer ones are uh, number keys. I see. Yeah. It's a bit of a uh, weird layout because uh, I think the point of the Jordi was to be small and compact, so having a number row wasn't uh, possible. I see, I see. And I noticed, like, when I press, like, a single key, a, a word comes out. Yeah. So those are single key briefs. So for example, uh, Actually, I can't think of one. Okay, so S would be is. That's one. Uh, T would be... T on the left would be it. T on the right would be the. So those are like uh, single mm. key briefs. And you eventually do have to learn those because they're really important. Mm -hmm. And this is and this is so, so soft. I think I got like the 20G one or yeah. something. Yeah, uh, Georgie is 12 grams. It's really, really sensitive. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> You could, you could basically sneeze on the keys and it'll actuate. Oh dear. <laughs> I see. Alright, so this is this sort of uh, working. Uh, hold on, I want to I try... This is, so it works for Google Docs. I want to try if it works on other programs. The whole point of Plover is that it will work on other programs, but yeah, there can be problems where it doesn't. Um, I'm not a Windows person, so I just hope this it works on other programs. Okay, uh, so, <clears throat> let me see. It does! Nice. It does! Oh my god. Uh, is there an enter key for this? 
Enter key would be RR in Seno notation, so that would be... Um, it's hard to really point <laughs> which keys on the Georgie they are. Right, right, right. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out the thing. I'm gonna pull out the thing. RR is... Mm -hmm. This one and uh, this one. There we go. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this is gonna be very, very helpful. Okay, uh, so you mentioned earlier that you, <laughs> this is so many, so much to digest, so many tools. <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> we are going all the way through it. So you mentioned earlier that your 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 keyboard your board broke, right? Yeah. So um, I guess this is a good time to t go into the boards itself. Like, what kind of boards are there? How do we get the boards? Things like yeah, that. Yeah. So um, there's a page. I'm gonna send it to you. It's uh. Sure thing. It's basically a list of all the different hobbyist keyboards as well as professional ones uh, too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's <clears throat> there's a <clears throat> sorry, no there's about five of them, and um, they all have their pros and cons. But they're all basically really good. And like when people come over to the Plover Discord and ask which one we recommend, we just say whatever's available. Because the problem with the hobbyist boards, it's not that they're bad boards; it's that they're made by hobbyists. So mm -hmm. there's only a limited number of them <clears throat> ah. and they always have to make it basically in their spare time. So it's not really, uh, it's not like mass produced. I Although, see. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, between them, they're, they're all really good. <laughs> there's not much to really say about them. <laughs> Fair enough. So this, <clears throat> this is the one I got just in case, uh, chat, you can see. I mean, it's, it's very dark. I got the black one, so you can't see very well. But um, I got the Georgie one, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, when, when did you uh, buy the Georgie, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, quite a while ago, like at the end of last year or something. Oh, that would explain. Yeah, because the, unfortunately, the creator of the Georgie has been going through some rough times, and there's like reports of huge backlogs and uh, ah. um, a long, long wait time, so. Yeah, I was, I was worried how, how you got yours, but it seems right. like it's all okay. Yeah, uh, no, I got mine like like a while and then I kept sitting on it because I keep kept thinking I want to do this, right. but yeah. <laughs> I never found the time <laughs> to do it. So I'm just like, nope, I got to do this. So that's how I pulled it back out. <laughs> yeah. I see, I see. <laughs> okay, so basically it's just go for the one which is available. Okay. And uh, they all have their own website, so then you can go to the website and then buy it and uh, get it shipped and all that, I suppose. I guess one thing that you might want to take into consideration is the uh, how heavy each key is to actuate. So for example, the Georgie's at 12 grams. Mm -hmm. This photography by default is at 40. And generally, the faster you get, the lighter springs you want because it's easier on your wrists. And when you go really fast, you're pressing down keys really, really quickly. And, mm. you know, because they're individual key switches, the weights add up and it gets really tiring. So the lighter you go is better, the faster you go. But also if it's lighter, it's easier to mispress if you've, you're just starting out. Um, but all of them are fairly light. The uni and the splitography mm -hmm. are the only ones that are about above 30 grams. But they actually, you can buy springs to swap them out later if you're into tinkering with hardware. Oh, so you like you remove the caps yourself? And yeah, then you yeah. Replace... You open the switches and then replace the springs. Oh. It's a bit, it's really boring and tedious, but it's it's so worth it. I did it on my splitography, and I absolutely loved it. I see. All right. Okay, so guys, uh, here are the boards. Uh, you can see the, the the prices are also listed here. They're very affordable. Honestly, so uh, very affordable compared to professional Seno machines, which can cost thousands. 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 Yeah. Why? What's the difference? So okay, this is a. Uh, it, it's it's hard to answer, but the main reason is that firstly they're not mass produced. Mm -hmm. uh, the demand for professional Seno machines is extremely low. Secondly, they're not just regular keyboards. They're not like key switches. They have uh, really complicated lever mechanisms. 
in that if you press down one key, it's the same as if you press down multiple keys in terms of weight. So mm -hmm. pressing down 20 keys would require the same amount of force as pressing down one key. And also they use sort of, uh, I, I don't know, uh, they're called Hall Effect sensors so that they actually map where the levers are during a stroke. So you can actually configure where each key actuates uh, different to each other. So for example, if you notice that your, your ring finger keys tend to actuate too soon, you can adjust that and compensate for that. Oh, and it's, it's oh. really, really complicated mechanisms and uh, you can adjust the tension, that's the weight. Yeah, it's it's not just like a regular keyboard. I see. So they have a lot of bells I, I do and think they, they might be like overpriced. People do think it is that, but it, it is what it is. But it's definitely not like a scam. People think like thousands of dollars for a keyboard, but no, it's, it's definitely not a scam though. I see. I see. I see. I see. Uh, chances so we basically adapted court notation based keyboards <coughs> into keyboards to make translators translate harder faster harder better faster and stronger <laughs> it's more like this has always existed so this is now it's sort of me trying to incorporate this into into my translation work uh okay uh tell me about plugins i want to ask about this right so plugins <coughs> Sorry, plugins are basically extensions to Plover that honestly they're really really uh, helpful and useful. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of them that I might want to recommend right now is called Spectra Lexer. If you go into the Plover Plugins Manager, that's in Tools Plugins Manager, mm -hmm. and scroll all the way to the bottom, uh, you find Spectra Lexer, which is a stroke analyzer. Mm -hmm. It basically you can look up different words and it breaks down how to stroke each word. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a security risk. <laughs> yeah, so the thing with pl uh, plugins is that anyone can submit plugins, anyone can write them. So there is oh. the possibility of malicious plugins. Um, but the ones we recommend, they're created by trusted members and, you know, a lot of us use them. Hmm. Okay. I see. So that, uh, I, I think I've, I've just installed it mm -hmm. how do i pull it up oh spectra. right there so now go. you have to restart plover mm -hmm. uh after every plug install you always have to restart mm -hmm. and then you go to for the for different plugins they have they come with different functionality so for example some plugins might not have a gui they might only add support for different uh dictionary formats for example mm -hmm. uh but others like spectra lexer there's a button right there uh, you can press it and it opens the spectra lexer window mm -hmm. And uh, what, what does this do exactly? Do I press things? Uh, how do I interact with this? Yeah, so in the search bar, you can search for a word. So <laughs> think of any word, I guess. Okay, so with my with my normal keyboard then, right? Yeah, with your normal keyboard, you can look up words. Uh, what's a random word? Uh, compensate. <laughs> compensate sounds popped good. popped in my mind. <laughs> it's the one on the left, the search bar. Okay, so like this. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so then it, it teaches me how to ah type the entire mm -hmm. word uh, and explains the location of each of the strokes. Wow. Yeah. So uh, actually, yeah. So so for example, it shows you where the ending M sound is on the right side of the keyboard. So that would be the P L, but it doesn't say P L. It just says M there. So it shows you. Uh, which one? Uh, I'm not sure if you're if you've selected the one I'm thinking of. Um, so most words have many different ways to actually write write them. Uh, so there can be oh. uh, written out methods and also briefed method methods. Briefed just means that it's abbreviated. It's not a phonetic match. Written out just means that it's phonetically sound sort of, and it's it's more uh, more rule based instead of just arbitrary memorization. I mean, rule base would be preferable, right? Because yeah. then you wouldn't yeah. want to memorize mm -hmm. everything, right? Right. Right. Okay. So that that would be the the three stroke ones, the the one that's uh, that has three strokes in it. It would mm -hmm. be com, pen, and sate. But because ah. uh, of the YouTube latency, I can't see your screen in real time, so I don't know what's going on. Fair enough. Uh, hold on. Let me just let me just show you. Let me just share my screen with you actually sure yeah i think that would be better <laughs> i'll just do that sorry i should have done that earlier 
There you go. Right, so you have a semi-brief, semi-written out. Um, so you can select the ones in the bottom left. Um, bottom left? Uh, yeah, the one right above. The one right above. This one. Yeah, this one is the one I'm thinking of. It's it's completely written out, and it's completely rule-based. Oh, so these are all ways that you can type this yeah, single word. Yeah, those are all different all different uh, uh, entries to write compensate. Oh my god! <laughs> Now, uh, one thing I should definitely mention is that some, uh, with Plover's main default dictionary, unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of the strokes are, a lot of the entries are called misstrokes. And basically, what they are is uh, ways to write a word, but with extra keys added or keys removed. Because when a stenographer is sort of writing, if they miss a key, they will just add that stroke to translate to what they want. It's sort of like autocorrect, so that when they do that, wrong entry again, it'll still output to what they wanted. And unfortunately, main.json is full of these misstrokes, so it's hard to tell which one is sort of the uh, correct entry to use, so to speak. <laughs> so it, yeah. helps, it, helps, it helps pick up the slack for you, so then it, you, you end up sort of learning the, the wrong way and it just works. Yeah, that's, that's always a problem, yeah. <laughs> and it, I've, I fell into that trap as well. But I see, I see. Hopefully with tools like Spectralexer, it's easier to spot the ones that are wrong. Mm -hmm. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. All right, and then so then uh, so it, they're just like a, there's just a whole list of plugins yeah, and yeah. Uh, all of them. We can just mm -hmm. uh, I can slowly go through them and see if anything works for me or. <laughs> see, yeah, just, just, just don't like blindly install plugins because you know there mm -hmm. could be a security risk. It's pretty low. I don't think anyone in the plumber community is just adding the various plugins to it, but it is possible. So just don't like inst install all the plugins. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah. <laughs> I see there's one for French, and there's an Italian yep. Stentura. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can use this for other languages too? Yep, yeah. How about Japanese? Yeah, so Japanese Steno is kind of... It, it does exist, like for captioning in Japan, as far as I... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they use something called Steno Word, which huh. is it's actually a really interesting layout. It's basically just 10 keys, so one for each finger almost. Hi. Uh, something like that, not quite. But the problem with it is that it only outputs the uh, phonetic script. I forgot, was, is that hiragana? Or... Hiragana, yes. Yeah, it only outputs that. There's no kanji or anything like that. Ah, it doesn't convert. So there always has to be another person with a stenographer changing it later, after the fact. Um, oh! There are, yeah. There are some people in the Plover community who have tried to make Japanese theories, uh, Japanese systems for Plover. Mm -hmm. I don't know how well, how far they've progressed because I haven't, haven't heard from them in a, in a while. I see. But yeah. So right now it's basically only all hiragana. Ah, I imagine that yeah. would be a, that would be a pain to sort of like make happen with, with all the mm -hmm. conversions. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And hiragana alone is, <laughs> that, that's pretty, that's pretty terrible also. Oh. <laughs> It, it, it's basically like uh like imagine that you're typing a sentence in english but there are no spaces oh okay <laughs> yeah that's that doesn't yeah wow wow yeah it's pretty yeah. tough <laughs> okay uh so that brings us to um the other uh, so just now you mentioned like like um different ways of typing so there are different schools i think that's the word for it right yeah yeah so what are what are the why are, what are the different kinds of schools? Why what tell me about the schools just in general. Sure. Yeah. So there are many different I guess you can say uh, spectrums on different uh, schools of thought for Seno. Uh, basically, the rules and the dictionary are all encapsulated in what's called a, a theory. So for example, mm -hmm. the theory that Plover comes with is called Plover theory. Uh, mm. <laughs> bit of a name. Anyway. Um, and there's also other stuff like Phoenix theory, Magnum theory, and one the, the one of the biggest uh, sort of spectrums that theories are placed on is whether they are memory intensive or stroke intensive. So memory intensive just means more arbitrary briefing, more words you just have to arbitrarily memorize, mm -hmm. and then stroke intensive means you don't have to memorize as much, but you use more strokes to write uh, each word, for example, because it's it's all rule based and made up of 
uh, the individual strokes. Ah. And there are benefits to each kind, but um, that's one main spectrum, I guess. Uh, there's another one that's sort of orthographic versus phonetic. So the, the, the problem with English is that there are a lot of homophones, right? Words that sound the same. <laughs> yes. So you have to somehow disambiguate between them. Uh -huh. And some theories use that by spelling. So mm. actually when you learn through Plover, you find that there are some chords, uh, combinations on the keyboard that are only for spellings, not actually, they don't actually represent a sound. Uh, Plover is pretty orthographic, so that means it relies quite a bit on spelling. Okay. Uh, but there are some theories such as Phoenix, which is a lot more phonetic based. Uh, but yeah, that's, those are just sort of the different schools of thought, I guess, for Seno theories. Okay, well, I mean, I'm using Plover, so mm. it would make sense to go with the Plover. Yeah, it makes sense to go with Plover, because also Plover is the only free theory. Because mm. making a theory is a lot of effort, so people actually sell theories and dictionaries and whatnot. Oh, they and Plover is the only, only free one. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Wait, and so uh, now you showed me all these different ways of um, typing compensate, mm -hmm. but like, do each one, does each one sort of sort of go with a different school or, or are they all part of the same school? Right, so one of the biggest problems with Plover is that the dictionary is quite inconsistent. It's actually just a uh, professional stenographer's basically personal dictionary that she gave to, well, it, well she was the founder of Plover and the Open Seno uh, project. Mm -hmm. But she, it's basically her personal dictionary, which isn't ideal because there's quite a bit of mixing of theories, actually. Ah. Uh, the, the main Plover theory would tell you it would be the, the one I, uh, I, I told you about, the compensate. Mm -hmm. That would be the, mm -hmm. the canonical way to write it. But there's also other ways such as dropping some syllables, dropping some uh, vowels. Mm -hmm. um, okay. For the most part, Plover theory is basically just a mix of a bunch of different theories, but it's, it's, it's really not, it's not as bad as it sounds. All right, because fair enough. they're all quite similar and yeah, it's always going to be one uh, sort of way to write each word that is predictable. Understand, understand. Okay, uh, now, so aside from uh, sort of uh, the syllables itself, how mm -hmm. about uh, capitalization? How does that happen? Right, so special things like capitalization, um, punctuation, uh, and symbols. Mm. So they're all still used, uh, they also use chords on the keyboard to write. But uh, I'll just look at capitalization first. Um, you can basically assign commands to uh, uppercase the next word or lowercase the next word and whatnot. And you also do it retroactively. So if you've written a word, you can actually write a stroke that will undo the last stroke, but capitalize it and uh, type it out again. Oh, yeah. I see. I like that. All right. Like uh, one thing is, um, mm -hmm. it was after I, I learned about Steno that, like, and I heard about how Steno can delete the entire previous word. That uh, I learned the uh, the keyboard shortcut on the on the QWERTY yeah. keyboard. Control backspace. Control backspace. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's made such a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. With Steno, that would be just the asterisk key, which is the uh, innermost index finger key, and you just press it, and last word is gone. It's really nice. <sighs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so uh, what are some uh, things to sort of look out for if I'm gonna get into this? Or actually, actually, so let me let me dial it back. If I wanna, sure. if I wanna get into this, say I I do wanna get into this. Where should mm -hmm. I start? What what should I what should I do? I have my board. I have Plover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, mm -hmm. that's a, a lot of. Uh, there's actually a page for this. I'll just. Send it to you again. Mm, sure. But the suggested, it has a suggested learning route, and it's sort of, mm -hmm. it, it's you always have to read some theory, right? You have to understand mm. the principles, the rules, where the missing uh, sounds are, where the missing letters are, etc. Mm -hmm. But then you also have to practice. Mm. So there are also some practice sites such as Stenojig or Typey Type, where they drill only certain chords, for example, or certain uh, um, only only certain compound clusters. Mm. Okay. And 
that's really good because then you know you learn them and you also sort of internalize them. Mm-hmm. So yeah, on the page I sent, there's that uh, suggested learning routes, and it's it's really well written. Um, oh, this one. Uh... I don't. Yeah, I don't think I could uh, ex- explain it any better than it's already on there. Is it, is it this one? Uh... Let me see. Uh... Yeah, that's it. Ah, suge- suggested learning route. Absolute beginner. Okay, so we're gonna start with a textbook. There's this. There are two of them. Yep. Okay. And uh, join the Discord. <laughs> I love that join the Discord is yeah. part of the instructions. <laughs> uh, I mean, we like we like helping folk out. So you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. if they have questions, it's really easy. Like I'm pretty active. A lot of other people are pretty active. They ask a question. Five minutes later, the answer the answer is given. So fair yeah. enough. Okay, and uh, so we just go go down this path mm-hmm. and uh, just lots of practice, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, definitely. All right. Uh, so while going down sort of this path, what are, what are some things that I should watch out for, or or are there any common pitfalls? Hmm. Well, not that I know of because it's been so long since I actually learned. Well, for to me, two two years is a long time. But um, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't really remember. I, I suppose there are there are the strokes you should not use, like missed strokes I mentioned. Mm-hmm. But it's also talked about in that suggested learning route about the misleading strokes page. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, there's not. I, I I don't know if there's much to really look out for. I mean, are there are there like common questions that everyone asks? Like so many people ask in the Discord, for example. Uh, there are like basic questions, but I, I feel like most of that you can clear up by just reading Art of Courting. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I guess one thing that is really dependent on the person is sort of like how you learn. For example, for myself, I just like to read. I just spent one week uh, reading Learn Plover. Mm-hmm. And then I started drilling right away, just doing seno jig and uh, just grinding it really. And then I just go back to learn plover if I, if for reference, if I notice I missed something and I just keep drilling. Uh, some people like art of courting instead, where it's sort of a gradual process. You just uh, learn one thing, then practice that, learn another, then practice that, and so on. Ah. Well, so there's sort of two different, uh, uh, I, I guess approaches, preferences, yeah, approaches to learning it. Right. You might want to figure that out. So you can just you know try between uh, switch between learn plover and art recording, see which one you like. And well, you can switch between. I mean, I, I guess you can read through both of them and see which one works yeah. better. I suppose, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. If if you find that one isn't very effective, you can try the other. I see. I see. I see. And uh, here it is on screen. There's art recording, and that's learn plover, and it just goes down like this. Yeah, Learn Plover is a lot more dense. It's basically a reference book, but uh, right. some people like that. I like that. Fair enough. All right. <clears throat> and there's a cheat sheet even. <laughs> yeah, those are all the different chords you have to learn. It's, it's quite intimidating. <laughs> that, that's a lot of colors. Yeah. That's a lot of weird shapes. Yep. <laughs> mm. <laughs> And uh, so you would have to basically memorize all of this. Steno mm-hmm. order. Steno order is a thing also, right? Yeah. Mm. So steno order, basically most syllables can only... Uh, most syllables have to follow this order. So for example, to write something like uh, pat, you have to use the P on the left, you have to use the A, and you have to use the T on the right, because the left side is the initial consonant, the right side is the ending consonant. Mm. Okay. That's why there are multiple... Uh, multiple letter keys on each side. So the two T's and the two S's. Uh, yeah. Okay, so basically all of these uh, consonants just constitute mm-hmm. the starting sounds of all the words in English. That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, left side is all initials, initial sounds. And uh-huh. then the vowels in the middle and ending sounds on the right. Why are there more ending sounds than there are starting sounds? Um. I don't know if that's necessarily true because there are also the compound clusters and missing sounds. It's just, oh. uh, I, I think, I, I heard somewhere that uh, Seno was originally very right-hand heavy just because hmm. most people were right-handed, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure if that's true. But it is definitely right-hand heavy, that's 
<laughs> you can definitely say that. Right. I mean, like for example, like on the right hand, there's like there there's F, right, and then there mm-hmm. is there's uh, there's L, and there are letters that are not on the left hand. But on the left mm-hmm. hand, then you would sort of reproduce that with a combination of these keys, then, right? Yeah. Yeah. The right side has actually, yeah. I, I take back what I said earlier. Right side definitely has a lot more compound clusters and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of like the uh, the the shun sound as in definition, mm-hmm. that's on the right side. So it's not even it's not even a letter. It's it's basically an entire sound on the right side. Mm-hmm. There aren't that many on the left, as far as I can tell. Mm, okay, so you you there are words that you can type with just one hand. Uh, sorry, no, not quite. Oh, not, it's just, not quite. Not like it's that. just there. There are more sounds on the right side. Okay, fair enough. Okay, all right then. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot to actually go over. Yeah. Designing briefs. Uh, so one thing that I'm definitely gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to add translations, right? So uh, by mm-hmm. translation, it means. Translating what is pressed to what appears on screen, right? Yeah, an entry, an entry, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, so because I do Japanese English, uh, sometimes there are sort of Japanese words that kind of right. uh, stay, yeah. they they remain. So I'm gonna have mm-hmm. to add translations for those, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, sometimes, rarely, I would. Oh, uh, how about like italicizing things and bolding things? Are they, uh, is, that, is that possible? Wouldn't that be taken in, in in your sort of your word processor? So, for example, if you're using Google Docs, you just hmm. uh, press the button for bold or Control B. Well, I mean, like for example, like uh, hold on, where is my test thing? Is my testing right? So, like if I'm typing with yeah. my normal keyboard, mm-hmm. I would, uh, for example, um, like Control I, right? Yeah, to italicize and I type something. And then mm-hmm. Control I again to undo it. Is there like a sort of like similar like toggling toggling mechanism? Okay. Yeah. 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 So for uh, this plover, you basically just emulate keyboard shortcuts. So mm. in the past, you'd have to basically create your own entries for every single keyboard shortcut that you use. Mm-hmm. But nowadays, there are a bunch of different uh, dictionaries online you can find, which mm-hmm. basically already contain every single keyboard shortcut you can use. Uh, one I can think of is Emily's uh, Modifiers Dictionary. Uh, let me just send you a link to it. Okay, thank you. And yeah, it, it has all the different all the different keyboard shortcuts you can write. And it's, it's really great. You just press, for example, one key represents control, the other key represents whatever, then that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, what do I do with this? releases right okay so this is a okay this is yeah this is a python dictionary so first of all press the emily modifiers.py in the middle of the page it's the file ah uh, this one yeah okay. this one yeah and then go to uh right click raw right click it and then save link as save link it's on the bottom does uh, right above yeah that one okay uh yeah and then save it wherever you want desktop whatnot okay i'm going to save it as desktop mm-hmm. now and then in plover you have to install a plugin so this is a python dictionary which is basically instructions on how to parse a, a stroke so for example when you press a stroke on your keyboard plover will parse it and then we'll hand it over to the plover uh, python dictionary which will basically run some code and figure out what entry to use so we have to get that plugin so i go to plugin manager mm-hmm. is it yep and scroll down to Plover Python Dictionary. Plover Python Dictionary. This one. Yep. And then install. Install. All right. Close. All right. Restart. And then restart. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, so on the bottom, there is that green plus uh, the one on the left. That's the add translation. So go to the, the other one. So not this one. Ah, my bad. Yeah. And then press open dictionary. Okay. And then open the Python file you just installed, uh, downloaded. This one. Yeah, that's it. And then it's installed. And it's installed. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's pretty. It's then, a pretty simple process. Yeah. Yeah. And then just refer to the page I sent, and it has instructions on how to write uh, different uh, modifiers and shortcuts. Sorry, not this one. This is the code. You can go go to the one back, and there's some diagrams. Yeah. 
I see. Let me see. Control would be F. Mm -hmm. And then just R shift. I, 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 like right now, I, I don't have like a good grasp on everything that's possible. So it seems like a lot is being like, like put onto the shoulders of each and every key. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it is very, it is a lot to digest. Mm. Okay. All right. But uh, the thing is, okay, so yeah, I, I think I just understood what you meant. So like basically having those keys represents control the modifiers whatnot. That's only because you press down the unique starter, which is. Uh, shown above. Basically, the unique starter just means there are no other entries in the dictionary that contains that. So it's if you hmm. press that chord, then any other key you press is never going to translate in the default dictionary. So that's why you can use those other keys as modifiers. Ah, I see. Well, mm -hmm. So there, there are combinations that, that don't do anything? <laughs> oh. Yeah, there are some combinations that just don't translate. They're called untranslations or untrans. Huh. And when, 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 you, when you write an untrans in Plover, it just spits out the uh, raw steno. So for example, if you, uh, I don't know, press... I can't think of an untranslation off the top of my head, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you spam right. some keys, you're, you're bound to get some untranslation. It won't show in the plumber in the paper tape, My but bad. yeah. Uh, don't. I think you just switched it into QWERTY mode. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, that's QWERTY mode. Okay, so I press the thing again, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not showing anything anymore. <laughs> oh, did did you enable output? Oh well, yeah, you did because because it's not there's an option in the configuration to enable at start, so you can check that if you want. I definitely would want. Yeah, to. there you go. Those are untranslations right there. Okay. It just spits out the the raw steno. <laughs> I see. It's really funny when you're like chatting to people online and then you just uh -huh. say something like H R P B L G and like what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's so much better than like when people wanted to type like random stuff. They do this. This is so yeah. much better. This is so much, so much more random. <laughs> All right then. Okay. Uh, I think that is actually about it for the questions I had. All right. Prepared. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you want to touch on, or anything you want to talk about? Uh, not really. I think we went over most of <laughs> most of all. I most that I really know about Plover, to be honest. Hmm. All right. And uh, so yeah, just just join the Discord, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, like, it's it's really really active. It's a really really active one. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, that's that's amazing. Okay then. Uh, Are there any questions submitted on the Google forms or? That is a good question, but I don't think there was any. Yeah, that, I didn't notice much. Mm, yeah. All right then. Thank you for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for having me. <laughs> so begins the the. The practice, the training montage, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> 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 all right, then. Uh, thank you for coming on, yeah. and uh, everyone. Uh, so all the uh, all the links for everything is in the description below. I've included uh, links for um, Eric's channel and uh, and all the other sort of uh, resources that we've uh, gone over today. I've also put that there, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. This is it then. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank All you. Right. Bye, Chad. I'll be going now. Bye. <laughs> Bye.